Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here. The video you're about to watch is one of the many lessons that I'm creating on kbtrends.com for the course on the CCNA 200 301. The course will teach you all the main concepts that you have to know in order to go and take successfully the CCN exam. But the goal is not the exam itself, but the knowledge that you have to acquire in order to get the exam or get the certification and build a successful career in the tech industry or in networking. So I take all my time to explain everything that you need. Hundreds of lessons are available on kbtrends.com. So if you are interested, if you are in the tech already, you want to boost your career, or if you want to start a new career in the tech industry, go on kbtrends.com. The course is there. Or send me an email at the email below. I'll be glad to respond. Thank you guys and enjoy the lesson. Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here. Welcome to the lesson number 5.3.9 for the course on the CCNA 200-301. Today we're going to talk about Metro Ethernet. We've been talking about WAN architecture. In the past lessons, we saw some ways and technologies that are used by service providers to bring you dedicated lines or leased lines between your business locations. And today, Metro Ethernet is one of the newest and best ways to have dedicated connections. So we're going to cover the different concepts of Metro Ethernet today that we need to know for the CCNA exam. And these are the main points of this lesson today. We're going to see what is Metro Ethernet, what are the benefits of Metro Ethernet, and the different concepts that are associated. And then we're going to see the different services. Metro Ethernet can also be called Carrier Ethernet. So these two can be used interchangeably. Sometimes you hear carrier Ethernet, sometimes you hear Metro Ethernet. It's uh, pretty much referred to the same technology or same concept that we're going to see today. Metro Ethernet is, as the name says, it's an Ethernet-based network transport that can be deployed in a WAN. In the past, we saw all those other technologies like T1, E1s, and, and so on. Those are ways to create list lines. But with Metro Ethernet, you can also create dedicated or private lines between different locations using Ethernet. And we know that Ethernet originally was for local area networks, but Ethernet is now being extended to be applied to a WAN or wide area network. And if we want to be more specific, it's being applied to a MAN or me a metropolitan area network. Metropolitan refers to a city. So if you are in a big city, mostly uh, modern cities, they usually have what is called a metro ring, which means that cables or fiber uh, fibers are deployed around the city so that all the customers in that city can connect to the network for many reasons. You might have a location on the, the east side of the city, you want connectivity to the location on the west side, or you might be in Denver, you want connectivity to your other location that is in New York. So with Metro Ethernet, you're going to have a switch, an Ethernet switch that is going to be in your building or somewhere close to you where you have a port to which you can connect. And you can also have another port on the other end of the city or the other end of the country where you can connect your other device. And those two devices are going to be connected as if you had a cable going from one end to the other. So Metro Ethernet is way better than all those old technologies because with Metro Ethernet, um, speeds are high. You don't have low speed like with T1s and so on. There is a non-profit organization called MEF or Metro Ethernet Forum that is there to actively you know, define and regulate all the concepts and terminologies that are linked to Metro Ethernet deployment. And they even have some certifications. If you want to become very good at uh, Metro Ethernet networks, you can take one of the MEF certifications. I think there are many. I've never taken any of them, but it's there available. There's also IETF that does some things, but usually, I mean, mostly it's MEF that defines most of it. Next, I'm going to show you some Metro E design. And here we can see, as I said, usually it's like a ring. So it's a ring around the city. And we can see it here. On this other end, we have uh, these lines here going to the backbone or the core of the service provider. And on this other end, it's going to the customers. We have uh, these lamps here connected to the Metro ring. And we may even have customers directly connected to the metro rings through the switches. And this is one of the switches. This is a ME3800X. Uh, and in the next slide, I'm going to show you what they look like usually. And here we have a metro ring here. And we have UNIs. I'm going to define UNIs later on. So usually if you are a business and you are in a certain building, the service provider, let's say this is a huge building with many different bus uh, businesses. 
So you are maybe on the fourth floor. The service provider will have a location in this building where they're going to drop uh, a Metro Ethernet switch. So when you order one of the many uh, Metro E services, you can just bring your cable to this switch and plug it to the port that was designated by the, the, the service provider. The service provider still owns the switch, but you just have a port on that switch where you connect your cable, and then you can have your router or whatever you wanna have on this end on the fourth floor. And we can have many other businesses coming and connected to the same switch. The switches actually look like this. These are some Metro E switches. There are many kinds of them. And uh, this I think is the Cisco Metro E3400. The ME stands for Metro E. And we have the Cisco ME3600. So these are switches. They look like regular switches, but they're actually not because they kind of behave differently. Uh, for example, in a regular switch, we know that when it's brand new, all these ports, I mean, all the ports on the switch belong to the default VLAN, which is the VLAN 1. But for the Metro E switch, every port is isolated because it's supposed to go to a different business. Like here, we may have business A here, business B, business C. So next we're going to see why use Metro E compared to all the other technologies, the old ones. Metro E usually gives you high bandwidth because you have ethernet connectivity, which can run very fast if you have fiber or even if you have ethernet in short distances. So you have connections from whatever you want, from uh, one gig or one gigabit per second, you can get a 10 gig, you can get 25, even 40 gig per second, you can get it on the, the metro switches. So the, the speed or the bandwidth is really um, the one of the main keys of Metro E because with T1, for example, we saw how low it was, like 1.5 megabit per second. If, even if you get the T3 or T4, it's still kind of slow compared to today's network because today we have a lot of things running on the network. We have uh, videos, video calls, we have streaming, we have a lot. So high bandwidth is one of the main benefits um, of Metro E. There's also the flexibility. It's really easy to deploy it. Uh, you just need to order it from your service provider and they're going to, usually they have that switch present in your building. If they don't, they can install it for you. You can also use whatever you want on it like once you have that connection uh, established for you you can use whatever you want it's yours it's very flexible scalability it's very easy to add a new site or a new location to your um to your design let's say for example we have a metro a ring here and we have the customer a with the site a1 right here we have the site a2 so there is a switch from the provider where A2 is connected. There is another switch where A1 is connected. If we are, and we have a connection, of course, between A1 and A2. If we want to add another site, A3, it's very easy. As long as we have a switch dropped to us or a switch present there from the service provider, we can just plug in A3 and the service provider is going to create an AVC. We're going to see what it is. An AVC between A1 and A3 or A2 and A3 as needed. So it's very um, uh, scalable. It's also very cost effective. It doesn't cost as much as some other options that you have for leased lines or uh, private lines. Metro E is affordable. And we also have quality. So it's a, it's a good quality, high bandwidth. And you can also set quality of service for your different applications that you have inside your network. So these are some of the main benefits. There are many of them. And I'm going to leave you a link where you can read more on whatever we talk about today so you can get more. These are the main ones. So Metro E is very important for today metropolitan networks. Hey, if you like the lesson, don't forget to like it on YouTube so you can help promote it to a bigger audience. And if you like the channel and the content, make sure you are subscribed and also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Let's go back to the lesson. So next I'm going to talk about these two concepts here. First of all, we have the concept of UNI or user to network interface. This is actually the interface that is provided by the service provider. This is where you can connect your your device and i showed you the switches the metro e switches so there is a port on the switch where they tell you to connect where you can connect and this is called the uni then this is actually the demarcation between the customer next to the customer's network and the service provider's network and we may have more than one customer on a single um, on a single uni so it depends on how the network itself is deployed and the next concept we're going to see is evc 
EVC means Ethernet Virtual Connection. So this is the virtual connection between your different UNIs that you have or that you ordered as a subscriber. And this can provide point-to-point -point connectivity or multi-point to multi-point depending on how you want your setup to be. So it's basically just that um, connectivity. It goes through the network, goes through a lot of things. We don't have to know what's in the back end, but all we know is that we have a UNI here and we have a UNI on the other end and this is the EVC or the virtual connection that we have between the two UNIs or between many UNIs that we have in our design. Next, we're going to see the different types of EVCs that are available. We have three main ones. The first one is called Ethernet Line Service. This is just like the name says, this is a line. This is a single connection between two UNIs. Let's say we have a customer or a subscriber A on this end and another subscriber B on the other end. We have a single line that is going from A to B. And A and B can be from, I mean, can can be two UNIs from the same customer. So it's, it doesn't mean that these are different customers. These are just two different locations uh, for the same customer. So this is an E line that can be created between A and B. And we're going to see the different services that can be built on, on this kind of uh, connections here. As I say here, it's similar to a private list line. It's like you have a cable going from A to B. This is, a, this is an E line. And then we have the E lane service. E lane is, or Ethernet lane service. This is where you have multi point to multi point. In a nutshell, it's just like you have a big switch where you connect all your sites. So you can uh, exchange traffic between those different sites as if you were in a single lane or Ethernet lane. And I'm going to tell you the kind of services that are built here as well. So third, we have an Ethernet tree. E tree is more like a hub and spark uh, topology where you have a site like the main site. Uh, this might be like the headquarter and we have uh, some satellite uh, locations B and C and they are connected to the root or the, the hub. Uh, this is where everything's coming from. So this is called an initry because there is a root here and we have uh, like leaves uh, going out. And we can represent all of that in these here. As you can see, we have different UNIs on each end. And CE, as you know, is customer equipment. We also have PE, which is uh, provider equipment. Uh, but if you want to talk in terms of zones or areas, uh, CE can, be, uh, can mean customer age and PE can mean provider age as well. So we have a CE and connect. it's connected to a UNI and we have a single EVC going from this UNI to the other UNI where we actually have a virtual connectivity between these two here. And this is for the E-line and we have the E-line where we have, uh, like in this example, we have three, e, uh, three UNIs and they are all connected to the same EVC so they can talk to each other without any problem. And this is the routed multipoint where we have the hub here and the other sites connected to the main one. So that's all for the different EVC. So now we're going to see what kind of services can be provided with Metro Ethernet using the different um, EVCs that we saw. The first service is Ethernet Private Line or EPL. This as the name says, it's a private line that you have between two locations. Just like I said before, you have the site A and the site B, and virtually you have a line between these two sites here. The good thing about the EPL is that the bandwidth here is dedicated because it's port based. So when you are assigned a one gigabit port, you have that one gigabit to you and to yourself. There's no other subscriber on that, on that port. Um, it's different from what we're going to see next, which is the Ethernet virtual private line, which is VLAN based. So you can have more than one subscriber on a single UNI and those subscribers are going to be separated by VLANs and you can uh, then segregate or, you know, separate the traffic inside the network. There's even a concept called uh, Q&Q where we have the first VLAN for the, like the customer's VLAN and the second VLAN which is the provider's VLAN. This is inside the provider's network. The customer doesn't see anything that's happening behind, behind the scene, but you have a VLAN that is assigned to you on a, on a certain port for EVPL or Ethernet Virtual Private Lane. So going back to the EPL, uh, the EPL is good because the bandwidth is dedicated. So the traffic is private. There is no need for any encryption or anything like that. It's very secure because it goes from your point A to your point B without being seen by anybody else inside the network. And I already mentioned the EVPL, which is virtual, 
where you have a single UNI that can support multiple customers. That's why we have uh, service multiplexing because we can multiplex many subscribers on a single UNI and we can separate those subscribers by using a VLAN. And I'm going to show you this with a graphic at the end so you can uh, get a better understanding of it. So next we're going to look at LAN services. The first one is called Ethernet Private LAN or EP LAN. The EP LAN is not point to point. This is multi point to multi point. So it's like you have a big LAN switch where you connect all your sites. Let's say you have a, you have a site A, B, C and D with the EP LAN, this here can see each other. They are part of a single EVC and they can see each other. It's port based, just like E-Line. And the traffic that you send here can go to any of these destinations without any problem. And as I say here, from a subscriber standpoint, it's like you have your different lanes connected to a huge lane so they can see each other. And next we're going to talk about Ethernet virtual private lane. With the EVP lane, we have multiple customers on a single UNI and we can separate them using VLANs. And inside the network, we can use any kind of technology to separate those customers. We can use VLAN, we can use MPLS or whatever, but at least we make sure that the tag that is given to the customer will exit on the other end of the, the, the EVC to that customer's location and the customer can do whatever he wants with the with, with the line itself. So it's VLAN based compared to um, to the, the EP LAN and it provides pretty much the same services. So these are the four main services and let me show you the, the little graph that I have here. So here, this is the first one, the EPL or Ethernet private line. As you can see, on this side, we have one UNI connected to one UNI. There is no combination of many different kind of traffic. So it's UNI to UNI for a single subscriber. And then we have EVPL or Ethernet virtual private line. And this one here, as you can see, on this side, we have two EVCs that are connected to this single UNI. So we are separating traffic from two different customers. These might be two customers, customer A and customer B. And here we have A and B. So they are bringing their traffic here and we tag the traffic and by separating the traffic using VLANs, we can then send customer B to uh, location B, customer A to location A from that single UNI. So that's how um, the EVPL is different from EPL. And here we can see the LAN services. For EPLAN, we have a UNI, we have different UNIs and they are all connected to the single EVC. So they see each other without any problem. And we only have one subscriber per EVC, I mean, per, per UNI. And when you look at the uh, EVP LAN, we can have more subscribers or more services on a single UNI. And we are separating the EVCs by, v by VLANs. And that's how the traffic from a certain customer cannot collide with another customer's traffic. All right, guys, that's all for today for this uh, lesson on Metro E. I went a little bit beyond because all of this, uh, talking about VLAN tagging and all of that, this is done mostly for a service provider, like if you are uh, going for the CCN CCNP service provider. But for the CCNA, this should be enough. You need just to understand the concept of Metro E and how it's being deployed in, the, in metropolitan areas. So I'm going to leave you some links. You can read for more details on what I talked about today. And if you have any question, you can ask in the forum or send me an email. I'll be glad to respond. That's all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. And if you liked the lesson, you can find all the other lessons on kbtrains.com. That's where I provide uh, many other lessons from zero to engineer. And if you like this video on YouTube, don't forget to click like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't. So you're going to receive our future videos as well. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Take care and bye.